My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you all are doing well. This is a backpacking basics episode, and in this episode, you're going to find a ton of tips, must know tips for camping and backpacking, tips for beginners and also newbies. Don't worry about the terminology, my friends, because everyone begins at the same place. At one point in time, everyone's a beginner, everyone's a noob. It's okay. <laughs> When it comes to being calm, cool, and collective in the outdoors, it's important to realize that it's time and experience that's going to help you achieve such confidence. Again, everyone begins at the exact same place. Everyone's a beginner, everyone's a noob, everybody has questions, everybody feels anxious, nervous. All of these feelings are completely natural and you will work through them as you spend more time in the outdoors. The first thing that I wanna talk about is selecting a location to go camping and backpacking at. Let's talk about getting your feet wet, as the saying goes. When you're deciding on where to go for the first time, I personally believe that it's important to select an easy location to access. A location where you could spend more time at camp setting up your gear, learning techniques rather than hiking. Potentially the longer backpacking and hiking adventures can come in the future. To begin with, start close to your vehicle. That way you can focus on camp chores, setting up your gear, staying out at nighttime. That way you can work through the worries and concerns that you have. Those that are logical and those that are illogical. Those that are conscious and those that are subconscious. You may be wondering what does Luke mean by conscious and subconscious worries and concerns. You have to keep in mind that humans have vivid imaginations. And because of this, oftentimes our concerns, our worries, our fears, don't always make sense. They're not always logical. That's what I'm talking about. So working through all of those issues, the concerns that you have that make sense and those that don't, that's what going out and getting your feet wet is all about. Plus, you have that safety factor. You're not far from the car. Maybe the car is right next to you. That's okay. With time comes confidence. And with time comes a clear head when it comes to your concerns and worries. The benefits of these easier adventures is that you get to spend more time in camp, as I mentioned before. You get to learn about your gear. And trust me, it will take some time to learn how your gear operates. And as you continue to do this, you'll get quicker and quicker and more proficient with your gear. The very first time that you go about setting up your camp, it may take you hours, and that's okay. It's all about learning about your gear. It's all about learning techniques, setting up your tent, setting up a tarp, getting a fire going, so on and so forth. When it comes to these initial destinations to consider, here are some tips to help you along the way. First, I highly recommend that you consult someone who's more experienced than you are. Get some ideas off of them. Find out about trails or campgrounds that will work for you. You could talk to friends, you can go online, social media pages, you could talk to people at Outfitters, and don't be afraid to call park offices as well. Talk to ranger districts ask questions. Next folks, I highly recommend that you pick a location that's close to home. I would suggest this for your first couple of trips. That way you could spend more time in camp than driving and so on. Going back to what I said previously, setting up camp can take a long time, so you wanna give yourself plenty of daylight hours to do so. You don't wanna be setting up your camp in the dark, especially if you have little experience under your belt. I would suggest trails that are close to home, campgrounds that are close to home, maybe walk-in campgrounds, parks, and so on. I personally believe that campgrounds are a great place to start. That way you can have the vehicle close by, it could be packed full of gear, packed full of food, and it will lower the stresses that you have, the concerns, the worries that you have. And also, you can pack the vehicle full of everything that you think you're going to need. You have to consider this, folks. As an inexperienced backpacker camper, you're not entirely sure what you're going to need. So having your vehicle packed full of gear, that's a great way to begin learning. You'll see what's important and also what's not important. If you plan to hike into a location, again, making the distance shorter is vital, especially when it comes to carrying your heavy loadout. Hiking with a heavy pack is going to slow you down and it's going to be more difficult. So again, it's important on focusing on shorter duration, shorter distance hikes to begin with. If you do plan to do a hiking trail, make sure to learn all about it. I would recommend a trail that has very little elevation gain, especially if you haven't done much hiking with a heavy loadout. If you don't plan to go to a campground and you're doing a short distance hike, pack that backpack full of everything that you think that you're going to need, everything that you think that you're going to want. Bring those comfort items. Again, it's all about experience in the forest, experience at the campground, experience with your gear. You may not know what's important, but you will. Time and experience will teach you this. To begin with, you may want to select well-traveled and well-established campgrounds or campsites. Even if those sites will have other people around you, that's okay. You can build upon their experiences and even make some friends if you want to. Additionally, having people nearby can be comforting. That's especially true if you have worries and concerns when you're out alone. Next, everybody, I would highly recommend that you make sure that there's water near camp or near your campsite. If there's water nearby, you don't have to worry about that aspect and you can focus more on camping, learning techniques, and so on. Next, folks, this is a big one. I would highly recommend going out on only very calm, pleasant days. Go out when the weather is perfect. And this only makes sense. 
Camping in storms and even in rain is an entirely different camping experience. So do your best to camp in calm conditions to begin with. Build up to the more extreme stuff. With that being said though, you need to make sure to plan for the conditions that are possible. Even if the chance is low for rain, you need to plan on it. So make sure to check out the weather forecast and plan accordingly. Now everybody, I'd like to go over some points that you need to consider when you're thinking about the location that you're going to select as far as a campground goes or a backpacking trip with a campsite. You need to know the distance from the trailhead to where you're going to camp at. Learn the conditions of the trail and what to expect. What landmarks are present? Are there water sources present? What are the forecasted weather conditions? And also, what about wind and rain or maybe snow? This knowledge is going to assist you with the proper clothing that you're going to pack that you need to pack for this trip. For the first handful of trips that you're going on, make sure that you have good cell phone service wherever it is that you're going. That way, if you have any sort of issues, you can call for help. If you plan to do any sort of hiking trail, make sure that you get yourself a good map or at least a good map on your phone. <laughs> do you need a compass? Well, the question is, can you use one? Can you use a paper map? If you have no idea how to use a paper map or a compass, there's no point to bring one. Luckily, we have excellent technology these days. So download a map on your phone and learn how to use it. It's not that difficult. There's plenty of programs out there that really make this sort of thing easy. There's an app called all trails. It is an excellent program for not only discovering campsites, hiking trails, and so on, but you can see pictures of the trails. You can learn of the weather conditions, the conditions of the trail. You can download maps. It will GPS track and a whole lot more. Now folks, that's not a plug for the app. It's just an excellent app. I use it all the time. And at the same time, it's very user friendly. It's not complex at all. So anybody could use it. I should mention that it does require a membership for many of the features, but that's to be expected. For any trail that you're planning to hike and camp on, you need to know what is required from you. Is there a trail like Login? Do you have to get a permit? These are things that you need to know before you even leave the house. Additionally, my friends, this is equally as important as all of the other points. You need to know what sort of wildlife is possible for you to encounter, ranging from bugs, the snakes, the animals. Speaking of which, if you're going into an area that has black bears, do you need a bear canister? Always make sure to check what is required for the trail that you're considering. Also, you need to make sure that you pack the proper gear, clothing, food, and water for the adventure that you're going on. And I'll talk more about this in just a second. One point that I really 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 want to make here when it comes to like going out on backpacking adventures let's say that you're not going to a campground for your first adventure you're actually going to do some hiking and go to a campsite this is really important everybody and i want you all to pay attention nature has a way of punishing mistakes and this is especially true when you're inexperienced that's why it's so important to plan 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 and don't worry about overpacking right as you need to make sure that you have everything with you to cover all of your needs. Again, as your experience grows, you will be able to carry less. And when emergencies pop up, when things happen, you'll know how to handle those situations with what you have. As an inexperienced backpacker and camper, you're not expected to know everything. You're not expected to be able to handle everything. So if you have more gear with you, you will have more options you will be safer. So don't worry about overpacking to begin with. Pack it, bring it with you, go on a short duration hike if you're doing a backpacking trip and you'll be in good shape. Now folks, let's take a second here and let's talk about gear. Let's focus on gear. This is part three of this tip episode. For any adventure that you're going on, you need to make sure that you have the proper gear. And that includes not only gear, but I'm also talking about clothing. I'm talking about your power needs, personal hygiene, and so on. With that being said, here are some of the most important items that you need to make sure that you have with you for any sort of adventure. If you're going out on a backpacking trip, you will need a comfortable backpack. A backpack that is capable of carrying everything that you plan to bring with you. I highly recommend that you bring a tarp with you, not only for sun protection, but rain protection as well. Tarps offer incredible protection, and they can be used in many different ways, including as a backup if you have a faulty tent, and if an accident happens and your tent shelter gets torn, or maybe even a hole gets melted in it things happen. So you need to make sure to be able to cover your bases. And a tarp is an excellent piece of kit that's lightweight and very versatile to carry with you. Next, everybody, you need a sleeping bag that's going to keep you warm at the forecasted temperatures. This topic could be made into its own video, but I need to say this. There's a lot of budget gear out on the market. A lot of it is good, but when it comes to your sleeping bag, this is an item that you should pay good money for. A sleeping bag is not a product that you want to go cheap on. You want to make sure that you're getting good quality with a realistic temperature rating. There's plenty of bags out there that say like zero degree that won't keep you warm at 40 degrees. So make sure that you're spending your money on a good product, a product from a legit company with a good reputation. Next, you will need a sleeping pad. 
as this is going to keep you comfortable as you're sleeping. You will need a stove. You will need fuel for that stove. You'll need a pot, a cup, or a pan. You will definitely need cutlery. You'll need food, snacks, water. Speaking of water, you're going to need bottles or a bladder and a way to replenish. If you're going out for a backpacking trip, you will need to know how to treat that water. And there's many different ways that you can go about this, and there's many pros and cons with each of those methods. In addition to the gear that I've mentioned already, you will also have some additional clothing with you. Extra socks, maybe an extra shirt, insulation layers, rainwear, and so on. Also, you will have your emergency items and what I call the additionals. And I'm talking about a first aid kit with items that you know how to use. There's no reason to carry a chest puncture kit if you have no idea how to use them. I know that sounds ridiculous, folks, but I've seen people carry all sorts of stuff. And that's especially true when it comes to first aid. Some people just go crazy with it. Most people do not need a lung puncture kit. That's ridiculous. I have literally seen one of those out on the trail. I kid you not. You need a way to start a fire, and I'm talking about a lighter. You need some fire starters so you can get a fire going even in wet conditions. You need a light source, such as a headlamp. You need some additional cordage to make repairs. You can use this with your tent. You can make a shoelace out of it. The sky is the limit as far as uses go. You need a way to clean up at the end of the day, and this may be as simple as a washcloth or some paper towels, or it could be expanded upon depending on what you want to carry with you. Bathroom supplies, power for charging your devices, sunblock, bug spray, sunglasses, paper towels for cleaning up your cookware, toothbrush, toothpaste, so on and so forth. For part four of this episode, let's talk about food for a second. If you're out for a car camping trip, take anything that you want with you. Pop it in a cooler, pop it in the fridge, you're good to go. You can cook until your heart is content. If you're going out for a backpacking trip, that's when you need to start thinking about space and weight. With that being said, the majority of backpackers are going to have freeze-dried meals, packaged meals, and so on. Very rarely do you see someone hiking around in the forest with the makings for a stew or a three-course meal or something like that. Yes, there are some videos on YouTube of that, but that's not really Realistic. A lot of what you see on YouTube is complete garbage. So don't believe everything that you see. Every ounce counts when it comes to backpacking. And that's why freeze-dried meals, packaged meals are so popular. You can still have a really good meal, but at the same time, it's not gonna weigh a lot and you don't have to spend too much time cooking it, making it. Something else that I highly recommend is that you bring some extra food with you. That's especially true if you're out for a backpacking trip. When you're carrying that heavy backpack, you're burning calories. You may burn more calories than you realize. So you might have dinner and realize you're still hungry. So it's always a good idea to have extra snacks, extra food with you. Also, what happens if you get stuck outside in the outdoors for an additional day? You lose the trail, you get stuck, you get lost. Having some additional food is always a good idea. Additionally, everybody, you need a way to store your garbage. Also, you need to think about the animals and predators that are in your area. What are you going to do to lower the chances of any sort of interaction? These are things that you need to consider. Be bear aware, be animal aware, and be smart. Before you go out for any trip, I highly recommend that you get physically and mentally prepared. Let's talk physically first. If you're going out for a backpacking trip and you don't have a ton of experience under your belt, I highly recommend that you take some time getting accustomed to your loadout. Load up your backpack with everything that you're going to carry on your backpacking trip and head out for like a day hike. Go to a short trail and do some hiking around with that loadout on. See what it feels like on your shoulders, on your waist. Learn how your pack is going to handle that loadout. Do this over and over and over before you head out for your adventure. That way you can condition yourself, your body, for the adventure that's to come. At the same time, doing this is going to teach you a lot about your backpack, how to make adjustments, how to get it comfortable for you. Also, you will learn whether or not you're carrying too much more than you're capable of carrying. With that knowledge, you can dial in your loadout and make any corrections that you need to. By the way, folks, don't worry about who is going to see you with this big, heavy backpack on a day hiking trail. If anybody asks, you tell them what you're doing and you move on. You're out there for you. You're not out there for anybody else. Additionally, it's a good idea to begin working out before your first adventure. Think about cardio and think about strength. You don't have to do anything crazy, nothing extreme. All you have to do is get your body moving. You're going to feel better, feel stronger, and these two factors are going to help you greatly when it comes to your adventure. You're going to feel good and you're going to have a good time. I do not recommend to anyone that they do anything extreme. When talking about working out, anything extreme is bad. A little goes a long way and so does repetition, as that's important to build muscle memory and also stamina. Now everybody, let's talk about being mentally prepared for your adventure. This can actually be more difficult than the physical aspect. To get you ready mentally, here are a few tips for you all to consider. First off, planning ahead can help you feel more comfortable as you're going to be more prepared for your trip. Make a list of everything that you need to bring with you. Research your destination, check the weather conditions, plan accordingly. Make sure that you have plenty of gear with you and make sure to make a detailed itinerary to share with friends or family. Be prepared, bring a first aid kit, know how to use the items in inside of it. Bring extra food. Make sure you have a way to gather extra water. And also make sure that you have a map, 
a GPS app, something like that. Make sure that you can find your way out of the location that you're going to. Pack all of the comfort items that you think that you're going to need and want. Make sure you're in a location that you have cell phone service. That way you can stay in touch with loved ones, friends and family. Check in, let people know how you're doing and where you're at as far as your adventure goes. Talking about staying in touch, make sure that you have a way to charge your cell phone. If you're in a location where cell phone service is not a thing, make sure that you have some sort of GPS communicator. Having that safety blanket when gaining experience is a great way to feel more comfortable in the outdoors. Next, Next, make sure you get as much sleep as possible. Stay hydrated, stay calm, cool, and collected. Even if something crazy happens, right? Let's say that you see a bear, you back away, you get out of that situation, and then you take a second. Breathe, think, plan, and then act. Don't let your adrenaline make decisions for you because that's always a bad idea. When it comes to doing your adventures over and over and over, create routines for yourself. Routines are comforting. An example of a routine is this. As soon as you get to your campsite, you immediately set up your tent every single time. You get your shelter ready. It's comforting actions like this that are going to be comforting. By creating these routines, you're going to feel like you have control over the situation and it's going to be comforting for you mentally. Next, everybody, as you're going about these adventures, you're going to be stepping further and further out of your comfort zone. And that alone is going to empower you. That's going to help you tremendously as far as your mind goes, as far as your concerns and worries and fears go. Stepping out of your comfort zone is super important as long as you're doing so safely. Additionally, everybody, I'd highly recommend that you never compare yourself to anybody else. When you see somebody else out on the trail, you see somebody on YouTube, do not compare yourself to them. You are your own person. Your experiences are different. The issues that you have are different. Everybody's doing their own thing. Focus on you and no one else. In summary, folks, when it comes to the anxiety and the nervousness that you feel when it comes to your adventures, to get past those aspects, it takes planning, it takes being prepared, and it also requires you to step outside of your comfort zone. Remember to start small and build up your confidence and your experiences. Do so gradually, and it's not going to be a shock to your system. With the proper planning and mindset, you're going to go out and have an amazing adventure that's truly rewarding. Are you going to make mistakes? Absolutely. Everybody does, that's how it goes. Oftentimes, you're not going to learn until you make a mistake. Somebody can tell you a million times, do this, don't do that. It doesn't count. You have to learn on your own. Making a mistake is what truly educates you in the outdoors. That is what is going to teach you the most. You will gain an understanding of why this or that happened, what you can do next time to prevent that from happening, and that information is going to be invaluable. My advice is to do your best to prevent making mistakes, but embrace the mistakes that you make. Learn from them. You can laugh about it later to yourself or with your friends and family. Remember, everybody makes mistakes. I've made just about every mistake under the sun, and I can tell you some stories, folks. Seriously, the mistakes that you make might make you super mad in the moment, but you'll laugh about them later. If you follow the tips that I've gone over in this episode, you will be on your way to gaining confidence and experiences in the outdoors that are both rewarding and safe. You're going to feel more comfortable not only with yourself, but out in nature. I've shared a lot of information in this episode, and in the future, I will have more tip episodes to assist inexperienced backpackers and campers. My friends, I have only touched the surface. If you have enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up. It helps the channel a lot. If you want to join the Wolfpack, you could do so on Patreon, or you can become a member here on YouTube. Additionally, make sure to check out my second YouTube channel, A Quiet Place Adventures. You will find new adventures on that channel every single week, just like adventures that you find on this channel every single week, but with one exception. With A Quiet Place Adventures, there's no talking. It's a completely different sort of experience. Anyways, folks, I am done for now. Everybody take care, be well, strength and honor. Also, be safe out there. Take care.